You have to excuse the way I look right now. I've been hustling all day, but I wanna make a video because I think this is something that some of you may encounter slash may want to deal with one day. It is transplanting of larger size perennials in the fall. As you guys know, my mom passed away last year. My dad isn't too sure if he's gonna stay and therefore, my sister and myself want to move some of my mom's perennials. Now these perennials are huge because they've been in there for a very, very long time. So the dig out and obviously the process of then putting them in the garden is a little bit different than that of just one that you would buy from the store. I could have grabbed these in the spring. I'm choosing or I chose not to because I wasn't too sure how the season was going to roll out in regards to freeze, thaw, you name it. I personally prefer to plant my perennials in the fall over over the spring. That's just a, a me thing. Particularly when it's a nice warm fall like this. First things first, you want to do this on a cloudy day whenever possible. And the reason why you want to do this on a cloudy day is because it's going to stress out the plant less. Obviously cloudy days are a little bit cooler. There's overcast. Sun is pretty stressful on plants. You combine that with heat and then ripping up the roots and it really gets messy fast. And that actually comes down to something called turgor pressure. And that is the pressure inside of the plant itself. Think of a plant as like a closed system. And when you start clipping and moving and removing portions of it, things change in its dynamics, which can result in wilting, et cetera, and so forth. So you wanna limit stress as much as possible. That is why I chose a cloudy day to do it. Now, it did not stay cloudy today, which is unfortunate, but here we are. So then what you wanna do is make sure your soil is moist. This is a mistake I made right off the bat. It rained all week, so I thought that the soil would be wet. Turns out it's incredibly dry because duh, we're in a drought. So the battery reserve of water where I am is zero. So now the reason why moist soil works out better is because you can tend to get a little bit deeper and the roots themselves, particularly the root hairs, tend to pull away from the soil a lot easier than dry soil because dry soil is really heavily aggregated and kind of clumped and bricked together. And that's what it's supposed to do, but it just makes it difficult to pull everything out whole. So then you want to try to get as much of the root as possible. So you want to back away from the root ball. I say half a foot, you could go closer, you can go farther. The more soil you take with you, the better. The more root you take with you, the better. Now, this space was kind of awkward because there was a lot of mulch and I didn't want to like totally destroy the area if my dad is going to sell the house. So I'm trying to be nice and I'm trying to just like take stuff out without disturbing it too much. So I did go a little closer to the roots than I would have liked, and I didn't get as deep as I would have liked because the soil was not pre-moistened. So that was mistake number one. Now, once everything's pulled out, I did pop them into plastic bags, and these were just garbage bags. The reason for this is because at the time it was cloudy, and Plastic can, take, can hold in a lot of moisture, and it's a great way to transport everything without a whole bunch of disruption of that root ball. Remember, I wanna to try to keep as much soil in place as possible, and you'll find out here in a little bit why. From there, I put them into a plastic bag. If it is hot, if it is incredibly sunny, or you intend to leave them in there for longer than a day or two, in sun, heat, anything like that, please put them in cardboard. Do not put them in plastic. You will bake the roots and you cannot recover from baked roots. Unfortunately, that is game over for those plants. You're stepping on it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can cardboard, the other option would actually be like a rubber made or a plastic of some sort with a little bit of water underneath, preferably stored in the shade whenever possible. Okay, so then I chose a space in my garden. Now I'm choosing a sunnier location um, than maybe what hostas and that sort of thing are used to, but that space also gets incredibly shaded and it's very variable in height throughout the entire season. Now you can see in the background that I have a lot of chop and drop in the space, meaning I took 
all the perennials and annuals from that space, chop them, drop them, and this you can now use as a mulch over top of the perennials that you're about to put in the ground. So the hole that you want to dig is going to be larger than the size of your root ball, as always, and if possible, the soil will be moist, so then everything kind of moves nicely. You can, if you like, fluff and add some stuff to that soil. I personally don't add compost or manures or anything crazy into the perennial bed, particularly the one in the front yard, just because it's so dry up there sometimes. And I do worry about adding fertilizer of any sort into the space if it can, it could technically burn the roots and that happens with any sort of dry soil. So I want to try to avoid that and therefore I don't add any fertilizer, synthetic or organic, when putting perennials in the space in the front. I encourage you to actually sink the root ball below the surface an inch to half an inch. And that means that your crown will not be fully level. The reason for this is if you've ever seen a perennial kind of popped out of the ground, that is from the freeze thaw cycle that we are blessed with in our cold climates. And as things freeze and thaw, it forces the root ball out. And this is particularly true for fall planted or plants that are doing the death spiral. So they're root bound and they just continue to go in circle or simply plants that have not yet established into that space. So put them down a little bit farther. So once you have it in the soil and it's below the surface, you've packed the soil on, prior to adding mulch, you want to actually step on the soil surface and really force those roots into the space so that they fill up all the possible nooks and crannies and there's really good soil root interface uh, touching connection. And this will be highly beneficial for kind of speeding up the process of things latching on, removing the possibility of, you know, the, the root ball getting pushed out and just a healthier plant overall into the spring. Now, if you have a plant that is really flat, like really flat, something that doesn't have any leaves and that you don't, you're, you're cutting, or something that you've cut all the leaves off of, and you're just transplanting like the bare bones of it. Well, I did this with Dianthus from my mom's house. I think it was Dianthus. And then I did it with some grasses from there. And then I did it with this other, I think it's a cone flower. I'm not entirely sure. It was literally just like bare foliage. There wasn't much left on it, no labels. And I can't quite remember what was in that space, but regardless, very flat plant. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually putting them into the ground, again, sinking them a little bit, and then putting a bunch of mulch on top and then actually stepping on the entire plant to get everything padded in and connected nicely. This is particularly true with anything that is grass or clumping type root system, because if you've ever planted sod in the fall before, you know you put it on, you actually stomp on it and press it in. And it's because we're trying to increase the interface between the root and uh, the ground. We want things to connect. But then after that, you want to get into mulch. And in this, I'm using a mulch called Typha. It's a Canadian company. It's They're trying to make it kind of like a, a peat moss replacement. They sent me these two bags. I actually really like it. It's a very fine mulch, and that's actually what I'm looking for whenever transplanting perennials in the fall. I choose that over whole leaves or wood chips. I like something finer, so either shredded leaves or this typha. Peat is another one that works very well. And the reason for this is because it holds moisture and it's a great insulator. Great insulator when it's nice and fine like that chopped up very, very tiny. Sawdust would be another one. So you're gonna put a ton of this on just like all over the plant. Then you're gonna water it in and then you're gonna add more mulch. You do not wanna stop adding mulch until you think to yourself, that's an obscene amount of mulch. And then you know you finally got there. After you're done that, you can actually um, put them, obviously on the root ball itself. You can spread it around the edges of the root ball if you like. And then this is optional. You can remove the leaves because we're going into the fall. I'm gonna leave mine on and I actually am going to water these plants until the very last possible moment. Uh, about a week before I see 
frost in the forecast. The reason for that is I want as much root established as humanly possible. And these rules also apply to things like garlic or bulbs that you're planting in the fall. And if you want to learn more about how to plant garlic or bulbs, you want to check out this video right here. And that video down there is what Google says you should watch. So go check it out.